Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're covering the Silkworm anti-ship missile in DCS World. This is a good few months old now, but uh, we're finally getting around to cover it. It is a land-based anti-ship cruise missile. This gets really confusing when you look into this. There are several variants within the Silkworm family. The ones that are actually called Silkworm are the HY1 and partially the HY2 and the one we get in DCS is the HY2. The HY2 is identical to the early HI1 but with further stretched body. The missile features a round nose accommodating the radar seeker. We have a terminal phase seeking radar in this missile. A pair of mid-mounted delta wings on the middle section of the missile body and three tail control surfaces. The missile is powered by a liquid fuel rocket motor and with a solid rocket booster attached under the missile fuselage for the firing phase. The HY-2 is launched from a land-based launcher and flies at an altitude of 1,000 meters during the initial stage of flight. After the missile switched to the cruising mode, the flight altitude was reduced to 100 to 300 meters depending on setup. During the final stage of flight, the missile switched on its radar seeker and dives to an altitude of 8 meters, 24 feet, until it hits the target. The single shot hit probability is estimated to be 90%. Due to its oversized body, the HY-2 did not develop a ship-to-ship -ship variant. The missile is obsolete and will be replaced by the YJ-8 series in the future. The HY-2 was widely exported to the Middle East and was the missile most associated with the Silkworm nickname. Just to give you a very rough idea where this came from, we had the Termit, T-E-R-M-I-T, in the 50s, which was a Soviet anti-ship missile. And then the Chinese had it in the 60s and essentially re-engineered it to the, the series you're looking at now. One of the derivatives was, as we see here, the HY-2. Very big one-hit missile. You can see that we've got a whole bunch of sub-variants here of the HY-2. The basic variant we get is just the HY-2. Specifications, length 7.5 meters, really long. Diameter 0.7 six meters really fat and wingspan of 2.4 meters very big launch weight of three metric tons for a missile very big warhead over 500 kilos shape charge high explosive so that's going to pretty much blow a ship out of the water propulsion one solid and one liquid rocket motor smack 0.8 range 200 kilometers this disagrees with what we've got in dcs in dcs it claims the range is 50 nautical miles about 80 kilometers so i don't know which one's correct flight altitude can go down to eight meters about 24 feet guidance uh, we've got the basic version that we've got is ins with active conical scanning terminal guidance radar i've also got infrared variants and monopulse radar variants as we can see there so let's go into dcs now and look at how we place this system we're in the mission editor now what we have is a tuara class lha which is starting from 30 miles nautical miles from the coast and is heading to attack we've got some silkworms to defend against that craft so we're going to go to ground units put on the coast it doesn't have to be in coast it can be inland it will travel over travel over land as long as the elevation is not too high there i'm going to go to missiles silkworm I'm going to face it in the right direction. So that is a silkworm launcher, single missile, single rack, which we can see there. At least we can see the launcher there without the missile. Pretty cool and well modeled. And we can have as many as we like within reason. And we're going to put them in an unrealistic community like that. And then we need at least one radar to go with it. So let's add another unit. Let's make it a silkworm radar. And that is going to be our radar there, as you can see. The radar has a range limit, not as such about the power of the radar, because seeing a ship is quite easy, but we've got to think about the elevation and the curvature of the Earth. Now, the curvature of the Earth isn't modelled in, physically in terms of polygons in DCS, but it is modelled in terms of radar detection, and so we have to think about that. So if we place it here, just a few feet above sea level, then its over-the-horizon ability is very low. It's only going to be able to see about 15 to 20 nautical miles. Remember, radar can actually wrap around around the curvature of the earth to a certain extent which is what the kind of effect that we will get with this type of radar so this is the most basic setup that we can do so let's just watch this happen so we can see our ship moving in currently 30 nautical miles so we'll speed that up and we'll see at about 20 nautical miles which is the over horizon ability of that particular radar and out goes the missiles nato designation is ssn2 sticks which is an interesting name see that the solid rocket booster is gone and we're just on liquid rocket now and we've got three more ready to fire 
don't worry, I will show you some cool explosions, but first of all, I just want to go through all the logic. The next thing I want to show you is what happens if we move the radar. Now, this has 90, this is a 1960s missile set, HY2, and that means that we have what we call old school Soviet data link. That's about 20 miles range, roughly. So this radar here, I can move away from these launches here about 20 miles. Uh, obviously, you've got to have line of sight for the radio link to work, radio data link. So what I'm going to do is actually move him up on this hill here. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful, make sure he's not too on a steep, too steep, steeper surface and so on. He's now 16, 1700 ASL, and that's going to allow him to see over the horizon for a God knows how far. You can work it out if you go to a uh, Google converter or something, but probably about 30, 40 miles or something now. So even though he's pulled him further back, he'll be able to see the ship further away. And we will get a different effect. So let's save that and go and show that. If we go again, 30 nautical away. So all it's going to take this time probably is just the silkworm batteries, a few minutes to warm up. And you see you've got the sticks out now. Uh, being sent out already this time instead of 20 miles you've got 28 miles and if we moved up higher into this mountain range we'd get even further over the horizon that's all i wanted to show in terms of the actual set itself now like a lot of anti-ship in dcs you can twin it up with long range modern data link now this isn't realistic i don't think this is going to happen in real life but Bearing in mind in DCS, we've got to mix all these different timing histories together. We're allowed a little bit of play. So what we can do is negate this radar. This radar, I'm just going to throw it off the board. But the way I'm doing that is by putting it behind a mountain. It no longer works, and I've tested it. It definitely does not see through a mountain, but it's there uh, just to make sure that the system can actually work together. And what we're going to bring in now is this guy, who's going to be um, an A50. He's going to be an AWACS. And the AWACS is now going to see this ship on his radar, and he's going to transfer with the modern over the horizon uh, data link he's going to transfer it to these guys here fire instructions to fire at the ship and the fire instructions will be accurate enough to fire the silkworms so let's give that a go the only detection we're getting now is from this a50 and again give the batteries a few mics to warm up and they're firing now just based on this awax data and with the awax data you can get all the way to the full range of the missile which according to DCS at least is that line there which is about um, 55 nautical miles that's all I've got to show in terms of the logic how to use it how you can space the systems out and whatnot next let's show some boom boom counterfiring missiles from the Tarawa Tarawa And our silkworm has been shot down, which is very annoying. A new one's out. You can see a solid rocket booster. And off it goes. Countermeasures out. It looks like we're going to get through this time. Thump. Half a ton of explosives. Very nice. And the only other thing I'd like to show off is that, uh, I don't know why you'd want to know this, but if you put multiple fire control radars per unit set, so if we did turn this into a radar, grabbed our other radar back, wherever he is, so we've got two radars or three radars, then we can support multiple launches. So with three radars, we can support three radar launches at once, and so on. Uh, that's all we've got to show for the Silkworm. Go and have some fun with them. I hope that helps and see you later.